yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, straight away. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 what do we got here? That's got to be a bass. That has to be a bass to go that hard. There we go, guys. That is an Australian bass. 100%. Lovely EP, great condition. Probably in that high 20s, maybe around 30. G'day guys, it's Geordie here. And today we're taking a look at the lures that I was using last summer for the bass, the estuary perch, and the redfin perch. That was a hit. Yep. So first of all, big thanks to Steve Vesey from the YouTube channel Fishing with Steve for putting together that intro for me. If you want to check out his content, you can find a link in the description below to his channel. So I just want to say that you guys might have noticed that over the last six months or so, especially over the summer, I've been mostly doing a lot of freshwater fishing. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, first is the close proximity of places like Werribee River and the Melton Reservoir to home. Uh, just being a father, having family life and all my other commitments, just those spots are really nice and easy to get to. But the other reason was I hadn't done very well in Victoria in the freshwater and I just wanted to do a little bit more in the freshwater spots around the state just to try and catch a few more fish and learn a few more things about fishing in the freshwater here. So I did that and mostly around town, um, around Werribee is where I've been fishing. And these are the lures that I've been using in the, in the river mostly. And what I'd recommend to people who go down to, you know, those areas that are around the Werribee Township and are looking to catch the bass and the ashery perch and the redfin in the river there. So I just want to say I'm not a pro. These aren't obviously pro lures, uh, lure recommendations. These are just recommendations from myself. Uh, also, Jason from Southern Edge Lures has thrown a couple in. And also, young Adam from the Young Guns has, uh, has given a couple of his recommendations here as well. So first of all, we're going to start looking at the soft plastics. Now, soft plastics were what I started with in the river. Uh, reason being is that I was most familiar with those. Um, and just because they're a little bit cheaper, if you're not that accurate with your casting, it's probably better off to start with something like soft plastics. So if you get snagged up and you have to bust it off, it's not something that's like a $20, $25 hard body. It's hard body. It's like, you know, three, four, five bucks in lure and jig spinner sort of thing. So the main thing I started with was things like this, two inch Z-Man grubs in midnight oil. That was a very, very good lure for me. Uh, also watermelon red from Z-Man, two inch grubs worked well. Uh, two, and a, two and a half inch grubs from uh, Southern Edge Lures. These did the trick as well for me out there. I know that Adam from the Young Guns liked things like this 2.75 inch paddle tail from Munro's and that's in the glass monkey color. He did quite well on that. That's a very good Galaxius minnow imitation. So yeah, pretty much your green, your gold sort of colors. That's what you're imitating the, uh, the food in the river with. You know, things like your little tadpoles, your little bait fish, other little food morsels that happen to find their way into the river there. As far as the rigging goes for the soft plastics, what I would use, say, a standard jig head like this, which is uh, it's a 112 with a size two hook. That's good for pretty much all of your, uh, your soft plastic options. Now, if you're looking to rig weedless, Size two to size four in the snake locks is what I'd recommend. And I like to take the weight off and I'll show you why. I use jig spinners in the river, size one, size two. And what you do with this is you clip the weight off and then you just clip the hook onto there. Sorry, I'm just clipping it on. Just like that. And then you can cast that around the snags. You just tie your leader onto this little loop here. And that's kind of like a spinner bait, but it's a little bit more versatile in that you can change over hook size, you can change over soft plastic size, you can change weight size as well, depending on where you're fishing in a, in a certain river system. So these were really good for me to start with, and this is what I recommend for anyone else to start with as well. So once you've been using the soft plastics and you've been doing it for a little while and your casting accuracy is really good, you're able to get those casts really tight into the snag and place the lure exactly where you want, you might want to start considering hard body lures. Now, everyone has their favorite and they'll all generally work in the river. Some guys like things like this, the Eco Gear SX40. That's in a nice purple and silver color. 
I know that Jason from Southern Edge Lures loves his Minnow 60. This is an Awakasaji color. So you can throw things like that. That dives a little bit deeper. But me, obviously I've got my favorite and most of you already know what it is, but if you don't, it's the Daiwa Double Clutch. So the Daiwa Double Clutch, in my opinion, is probably one of the most easy to use hard body lures and one of the most fishy lures as well. I've, I've caught quite a lot of fish on this hard body, this particular one in Ghost Wakasaji. Caught redfin perch, I've caught bass, I've caught Australian perch on it. Uh, you can slow roll it, you can retrieve it quite quickly, you can troll it. It's just really, really versatile and it responds really well to, matter, to no matter what you kind of retrieve you're doing with the lure. Now, as far as colors go, I like the uh, the Ghost Wakasaji and the Laser Wakasaji. So they're both kind of like they've got this goldy, purpley, silvery sort of coloration to them. They imitate the Galaxius Minnow in the river really well. But you can use colors like Laser IU, Golden Shiner, Brown Trout has also worked well for me in there. Uh, matte black will also work well when the water is a bit more murky. So you can use pretty much any double clutch in the river and you're probably going to catch a fish on it. Now, one other thing that I like with the double clutch is the hooks that they use on this are actually quite soft. Now, I know a lot of anglers don't like that, but the reason I like that is if I get this hung up in a snag, I can quite easily bend or even break the trebles with as light as six pound litre and get my lure back. So... I know some guys don't like it because they've broken trebles off when something like a good bass has hit the lure. But my thoughts on that are, you've got six other hook points there. Chances are you've probably got them on one of the other ones as well. And I would rather bust off and break a $1 treble hook than lose a $25 Daiwa double clutch, that's for sure. Okay, so last of all for the lures we're going to start looking at is top water. Now, top water was something I didn't start getting into until the end of the season. I'm kind of kicking myself now that I didn't do it sooner. Uh, you can kind of get a little bit crazy with your lure selection here. Um, my thoughts on that is because during those low light conditions, the fish can't see quite as well as they can during the day. So you can use crazy looking lures and they're still going to have a crack at it. So for me personally, my favorite lure has been the Southern Edge Lures 70 millimeter stick bait. Now... The color, wakasaji is good. Anything with sort of brown, gold, and silver, or one of those colors is generally going to be pretty good. Now, with these lures, when you retrieve them, if you've got a quick retrieve going, they'll tend to zigzag from side to side a little bit. But then as you slow things down, there'll be a little bit more of a straight runner and just blip along the surface. So another one that's kind of similar to it is the Daiwa Slippery Dog. And it has pretty much the exact same swimming action. It's the same sort of 70 millimeter long profile. So that's a good lure too. Another one here is a 65 millimeter uh, stick bait from Southern Edge Lures as well. This one here, it also has a very wild side to side action. It tends to blit a little bit more on the surface. It doesn't kind of slide as well as the 70. It's probably because it's a little bit wider on the head, I'm guessing. Uh, other lures that'll work well, things like the, uh, the Atomic Black Cicada. Plenty of fish being caught on this. Some guys like the Tiemco Softshell Cicada, same sort of thing, it's a Cicada topwater lure. Um, one lure that some guys like is the Bent Minnow. Now, I haven't tried this one too much myself, but I will be trying it next summer to see how it, uh, see how it performs. Uh, the other lure that I'm gonna be looking to use, which I haven't got here at the moment, unfortunately, is the Southern Edge Lures Bog Frog. Jason's been hit on that. I've caught a yellow belly on it, so my thoughts are that if there's any decent bass around, they're probably gonna hit that as well. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is an outfit that I'd recommend for the river there. Now, this is probably a little bit more suited to down towards Werribee as are the lure selection I've got here. Um, if you were fishing up in the Melton Reservoir, I'd probably recommend going similar lures but larger in size and the same as rod and reel. But for down in the river, this is perfect. It's a one to three kilo ultra light rod. It's a bit lighter than your standard one to three kilo, but your standard one to three will do the job as well. This one's only six foot. It's great for casting off the shore. The reason being is you do have a lot of overhead branches along there and the longer your rod, the more chance that you're gonna get of getting hooked up in branches above you. So nice short rod, cast really accurate. Thousand size reel, six to eight pound braid will do the job. Uh, six to 10 pound leader, that's all you need. And you'll be catching fish in there, no worries with rod and reel like this. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not a pro at all. These are just lures that I was using over the summer as well as my mates. And 
what we were using to catch the Australian bass, the estuary perch and the redfin perch. So if you've got any of your own lure recommendations, please leave them in the comments below. I'm more than happy for you guys to leave your own recommendations. And if you like the video, please like and share and subscribe to the channel as well. Cheers.